myx.com, whosup.com. These are websites that host something that's come to be known as revenge porn. Over the last several years, there's been an explosion of these websites where individuals go and without the consent of another person, upload photographs, uh, often very explicit, of that individual in a, in a nude way or a compromising position. And frequently, these images are posted on the internet alongside the personal information of the individual. Uh, this personal information can include their name, first and last name, their Facebook page, even their email address, their telephone number, or their home. This causes tremendous reputational harm to individuals. This is something that can be used in a coercive way within an abusive relationship in order to force someone to continue in a relationship that they don't wish to be in. And the harm is long lasting. For many of the individuals that have been impacted by this, when they apply for a job, when a friend from high school goes to look them up and they go to Google and they type in that name, the first thing that will pop up at the top of that Google search are these naked photos of themselves that they never intended to share with anybody else. Senate Bill 188, if we pass it, would make us the 16th state to go down the path of making this illegal, of providing protection to those who have been victimized in this way. It comes to us uh, from the Attorney General uh, who convened a work group that include the Legislative Council, the Department of Justice, the District Attorneys, the Oregon Criminal Defense Lawyers Association, and the ACLU. This will impact images that were taken consensually that were then posted without the individual's consent and with the intent to cause harm, shame, or humiliation, or harassment. In order for this to apply, the court will need to, uh, to prove that it was uploaded with the intent to humiliate and harass. So this means, for instance, that it would not be against the law for someone to share with a friend uh, in, a, in a private way uh, a photo that they took of their boyfriend or their girlfriend that would not be covered by this law. The bill would create a misdemeanor on the first offense and a felony on subsequent offenses. The bill came with a minimal fiscal. I did receive a question about that on the floor and um, we'll just kind of put into the record, we got a note back from legislative fiscal. The judiciary and indigent defense estimate the new bill will create between 15 to 20 misdemeanor offenses per year, one to five felony cases, and 15 to 20 juvenile delinquency cases. Those cases have a cost of $354 per misdemeanor, $740 per felony, and $375 per juvenile delinquency. The agencies all involved, the Department of Corrections, indigent defense, and judiciary all felt this was a minimal fiscal impact. While it has a min minimal fiscal impact, this issue has a life-changing impact on its victims and its survivors. And what impressed me during this hearing was the courage of those who were willing to come into our Judiciary Committee and tell their own stories about how they had been hurt and harmed in this way. One of the people uh, that came um, works in Senator Hass's office. Uh, it's Christina Gordon, and uh, she, I, I think, really demonstrated the courage that it takes to stand up to this type of humiliation and, and victimization. We see the same thing from Brenda Tracy, who has talked about the experience that she had at Oregon State University. Passing laws like Senate Bill 188 help to empower survivors of sexual violence and sexual manipulation, which revenge porn is. It helps us as a legislature to tell these individuals that they have done nothing wrong. Instead, they have been wrong. And the state stands behind them and, and creates a criminal justice system that will help them to seek justice and restore uh, their reputations moving forward. Colleagues, this is a, a good bill that meets the constitutional test, and I urge your, your yes vote. Thank you, Mr. President.